after smoothing the sheets on her bed as she prepared to settle in for the night. Suddenly the door creaked open. She spun around, her heart skipping a bit as she saw Thane standing there. Mr. Kim, what are you doing here? What if someone sees you? She stammered, panic rising in her chest. Such a joy killer. His gaze drifted around the room before he walked over to her bed and laid down, one arm casually resting behind his head. What are you doing? She walked over and stood beside the bed panicked. Relax, so I know he's going to see me. He said calmly and waved his hand. Even if someone sees me, I don't care. You're my wife after all. She licked her lips before speaking. Mr. Kim, Thang cut her off. Don't call me that, he said annoyingly. It's just him. He stared at her intently, and fidgeted her fingers and stood awkwardly. Anyways, he just promised my dad to protect me. That's the reason we registered our marriage. If any of your family members or friends discover it, I would be thrown out of the house and they wouldn't be any good to you either. Your father doesn't seem to like me already. She mumbled, avoiding his kiss. Then sighed and sat straight. I know you don't have to remind me every time. He said dryly. Once hesitation annoyed him in a way he couldn't describe. I came to ask, do you have any problems with your studies? I can ask that for a tutor. She shook her head. No, thank you, I can manage. He hummed and laid back. Indeed, you can manage. After all, you were the topper of your college. He muttered and closed his eyes. He wanted to ask her why do she avoid him in college, but he couldn't bring himself to question her. He shouldn't be. She left her sentence incomplete, seeing him glaring at her. Why do you act like a ghost around me? Well, you are much more comfortable with them, he said coldly, and bit her lips. It's just, I'm not like people you are used to. I'm just an ordinary girl. She met his gaze, only to be captivated by the intensity of the emotions it flashed. Don't ever think you're not good enough, he said with a frown and closed his eyes. One stood staring at him nervously while glancing at the door from time to time, then smiled inwardly seeing her distressed state as an idea popped into his mind. He opened his eyes. You'll get tired standing like this. I plan to sleep here tonight. She almost flinched with wide eyes. What? But it will be a disaster if anyone sees us together. Instead of answering, Thang reached out gently taking her wrist and pulling her down onto him. One gasped in surprise, her heart pounding in her chest. There's no problem in sleeping with my wife, is it? She looked away. It's not like we married because we have feelings. It's just a part of the promise. Then sighed deeply and switched the position and hovered over her. Must you bring it up? Do you feel that disgust with me? His eyes darkened as he spoke through his teeth. She parted her lips to speak but then hushed her. I don't want to argue about it anymore. I just want you to stay away from Ben. He's been hanging around you. He's just a classmate. He grabbed her jaw. He's interested in you and I don't want anyone to get any ideas about you. Got it? She hesitantly nodded. But what if he sticks around? I'll give him a lesson then. He pulled away and stood turning around. When stared at his retreating figure and averted her gaze to her empty palms. She knew he was mad at her, but she didn't know what to do. Few days later, this morning had been a real rain for mine. She had overheard a group of students gossiping about her and Ben, suggesting they were in a relationship. The rumor had spread like wildfire and it seemed to be on everyone's lips. Wine had been trying to avoid Ben ever since, feeling the weight of Thames' poor shoulder as he ignored her both at home and in college since that day. Though she picked the corner table hoping for a moment of peace, but that peace was short-lived when Ben approached her, a friendly smile on his face. Hi, Wine. He said, sliding into the seat across from her. You seem to ignore me. She forced a small smile, though her heart was pounding. She could feel eyes on her as she looked up. Her eyes met Thames piercing gaze that sent shivers down her spine. Yeah, I think we should talk about it. She glanced at Lucy, who was giggling and acting coyly beside him. But his attention wasn't on Lucy. 
it was fixed and mine. Then noted leaning forward to listen. I'll fix her gaze and then. You know that there's a rumor about this. I don't want to give anyone the wrong ideas so we should stay away from each other. Then smile faltered. He said something but mine didn't seem to hear as her attention was fixed on Lucy who was tugging Thames arm while Thames snapped at her. Why? Then held her hand gently making her flinch. Thames guessed Darwin at the sight while Lucy observed him suspiciously. I didn't mean to. Wine swiftly pulled away her hand. Don't bend, she said with a frown. This is not okay. We are just classmates, nothing more. Then pursed his lips. I think we should talk somewhere else, Wine. This is not the right place to talk. The cafe had gone quiet and she could feel dozens of eyes on them, including Thames. Wine noted lowering her head and stood. Let's go to the library. He led her out. She saw from the corner of her eyes Thames stood furiously but Lucy blocked his way. She just hoped it all went fine so she could explain to Thames and coax him. As soon as they entered the library, a group of girls who had been sitting nearby spotted them and Wine could feel the shift in atmosphere. These girls were known to bully others and had a particular infatuation with Ben. One of the girls, tall with a sharp gaze, said in front of Wine. Who do you think you are? You're nothing, Wine. You don't belong here. I don't understand how could a poor girl like you get admission to this college. The insults kept coming and before Wine could respond, the girl showed her. Wine stumbled but quickly regained her footing, her anger flaring. The other girl came forward and slapped her across the face. Without a second thought, Wine swung her hand, slapping the girl hard across the face. She then lunged at the other girl, pulling her hair and trying to claw at her face. She fought back furiously, then stood off to the side, looking uncertain and hesitant, but he didn't intervene. Wine's face was red and swollen and her hair and ear from where the sharp. While the girls were no different from her. Moments later, a loud, furious voice cut through the chaos. Enough. Wine looked up just in time to see Thames storming into the library, his expression dark and dangerous. Without warning, Ken grabbed Ben by the collar and slammed him against a nearby bookshelf, sending books tumbling to the floor. What the hell do you think you are doing? Are you even worthy of her? You can't even protect her. You know very well just one word from you and they'll come running into your feet. Ken snarled, his voice low and filled with rage. Ben tried to stammer out a response but Ken wasn't interested in listening. He punched Ben hard across the face, the impact making wine gas. Ken's fist flew in quick succession, landing blow after blow on Ben until he was bleeding his nose and lip spread open. Stop, you're going to kill him. Wine rushed to his side and grabbed his arm, trying to pull him back. Thang cast her a dangerous look while all the students gasped. No one dares to hold him back while he fights. Thang clenched his fist, seeing her swollen face and shelled state. Wine's kiss drew to the wound on her face and neck as Ben fought him back. She stared at his face wearily. Let go of me, I'm not done with him yet. He muttered through gritted teeth. She shook her head in denial. Then pursed his lips, seeing her pleading eyes, and stepped backward, yanking his arm out of her grip. He walked out with the crowd. Out, everyone. Lucy narrowed her eyes, staring at Wine suspiciously. Wine felt her chest tighten, but she refused to cry. The look Sam had given her, the coldness in his eyes, made her heart ache in a way she hadn't expected. Time stopped. The incident at the college had escalated quickly. The dean had called everyone involved to his office and reviewed the CCT footage. To her surprise, he had decided to give Wine another chance, acknowledging that she was new and had only been defending herself. But the others, including Tim, weren't as fortunate. They all were suspended. Wine had returned home while Tim hadn't. Now she had just finished giving Tim's grandmother her evening medicine and that she was asleep, Wine could finally retreat to her own room. As she opened the door to her bedroom, her breath caught in her throat. Tim was there sitting on her bed, his expression unreadable, as he stared at the floor. Tim, where have you been? She closed the door and rushed to him. 
He glanced up at her, his gaze cool. Instead of answering, he handed her a gold pack. For your face. Man sat beside him with a frown, glancing at the gold pack. You need this more than I do. She said, pressing it against his face, nursing the bruises and cuts. He reached out his hand and gently caressed her cheek. Does it hurt? She shook her head and looked at him keenly, noticing he reeked of alcohol. Have you been drinking? His eyes narrowed slightly, but there was a glimmer of amusement in them. Why? Does it bother you? Yes, it does. You shouldn't be drinking, especially after that fight. You would have been hurt worse than this. She said frustratedly and stood. He smirked and leaned his face close to her. Are you worried about me? He teased, when stared deep into his eyes. Yes, I am. She blurred and bruised her lips. Her cheeks flushed slightly as she pressed the cool back to his face with a little more force than necessary. You got into a fight and got suspended because of me. How could you sit here like nothing happened? Then chuckled softly his kiss opening as he watched her. I didn't expect you to fight back like that. She paused her head still holding the pack against his face. They were the ones who started it. He pushed away the gold pack and draped his arm around her waist, pulling her close. She held his shoulders and licked several times. Bad boy of the college got a bad girl wife. Not bad. His voice was as intoxicating as red wine. Her heart skipped a bit. I'm sorry, you got in trouble because of me. She mumbled, composing herself. You and I are not separate men. I don't intend to end our marriage. Drop the idea if you think you can go away from me because I never do what's mine. Don't be scared of anyone. I will deal with my family. Just stay by my side. He pressed his forehead against hers and whispered. They will never accept me. She said in a low tone. Then pulled away slightly and gripped her chin. That's my problem, don't worry. She nodded with a smile. He leaned and buried his face in her neck. He realized Ben was trying to hit on you. His voice came out muffled. Yes, and I'm sorry for the other day. I just thought of him as a friend. He hummed, inhaling her scent. But Lucy was trying to hit on you too. She could feel him smirk over her neck. Are you jealous? He whispered. She felt her cheeks heat up. I'm just concerned. She mumbled, avoiding the word jealous. I see concerned. He softly carries her hair. Lucy used to be my friend, but now I couldn't care less about her. When your dad saved me from that fire in the hotel, all of my friends were there, but no one tried to help me. They all were acting like I was a ghost just because of the bone on my shoulder. They felt disgusted. It's all about appearance and money. That's not true friendship. Had it hurt? He pulled away and shook his head. Not the bone, but their attitude. She nodded, stroking his purse. You should rest. She got out of his hole and stood. I'll take a nap here. My parents will come home at midnight. It wouldn't be a problem. All right, you can sleep here. She dimmed the lights while Hen laid on the bed. Wouldn't you take a nap? I want to take a bath and complete some notes. She went near him and covered him. Okay, then stay by my side until I fell asleep. He mumbled drowsily and held her hand. One sat beside him, then placed her hand on his chest. She dangled her other hand in his hair and gently trailed them. Her touch soothed his nerves. Few days later, Tim's suspension days had become something of a routine for both him and mine. Every afternoon when she returned from college, she would find him waiting in her bedroom. A comforting presence that she had grown used to. Their time together had allowed them to grow closer and the chemistry between them was undeniable. They talked, laughed and shared moments that slowly eroded the barriers mine had put up, though she remained cautious. Tim, on the other hand, had grown fond of these moments, even productive of her, and it showed in the little things he did. But unbeknownst to them, Tim's father had begun to grow suspicious. A sharp gaze didn't miss the subtle change in his son's behavior. The way he seemed to linger near wine or the soft looks he sometimes cast her way. Now wine was wiping the floor in the living room after accidentally spilling the juice. When a group of people and 
entered the house, Tan's friends, including Lucy, had suddenly showed up, their laughter echoing through the hall before they froze at the sight of wine. What are you doing here? One of the friends asked, clearly stunned. Wine's heart raised, her mind scrambling for an answer. She opened her mouth to speak, but before she could say anything, Lucy stepped forward, her tone laced with false concern. She must be the maid, right, Wine? It's okay, no need to be embarrassed. Wine pulled her legs, but before she could respond, Tim walked into the room, his eyes immediately finding hers. He saw the distress on her face and something protective flared within him. Thing you never told us that you knew her. He raised his voice and drew close to Wine. He was about to reveal the truth about their relationship, but Wine quickly shook her head, silently pleading with him not to say anything. He paused, understanding her unspoken request, though it frustrated him. Do I need to discuss my personal affairs with you? None of you have the right to question my people. Lucy cleansed her fist. Okay, leave it to him. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. I let out a sigh of relief and turned around to leave, but Tim held her wrist. Wine's coming with us as well. Before she could protest, he took her hand and led her towards the door, leaving the others to follow in confusion. Leah's eyes narrowed as she watched the interaction, her earlier satisfaction turning into irritation. Soon they arrived at the amusement park. Tim was by Wine's side all the time. They were walking. The boys dragged Tim a little farther from them. Lucy leaned towards Wine, talking sweetly when she suddenly said, So Wine, how does it feel to be a maid? It must be hard work. She deliberately said, raising her voice. Tim turned to look at her sharply and spoke up coolly. No one said she's a maid, Lucy. He just assumed. Lucy's face turned red with anger and embarrassment, especially when she noticed the way he gently touched Wine's arm, guiding her through the park with a care that was impossible to ignore. They had fun, bought ice cream, until Tim decided to teach Lucy a lesson. He blindfolded her, claiming he had a surprise for her. The others, including Wine, watched in stunned silence as he led Lucy to the roller coaster. He helped her into a seat, but before the ride started, he stepped back onto the platform, leaving her there. You can take off the blindfold now. He called out, barely holding back his laughter. As soon as Lucy removed the blindfold, the roller coaster lurched forward and her screams echoed across the park. Hans laughter rang out, soon joined by the others, and even one couldn't help but smile at the scene. He walked over to her, his eyes gleaming with amusement and satisfaction. You shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. He asked, though it was clear he didn't regret it at all. When she shook her head, though she was still smiling. That was a bit much, don't you think? His expression softened and he reached out, tugging a hair strand behind her ear. That was a small punishment for her trying to insult you. And I meant what I said. I won't spare anyone who tries to harm me. His words made her heart skip a bit, the intensity in his case making her both flustered and careful. She embraced him in a hug, resting her head on his chest. Thank you, Tim, she mumbled. He smiled tightly, his grip around her shoulders. His friends stared at them wide-eyed, but they didn't dare to question him. That Lucy wouldn't dare to bully you again. He kissed her hair and rested her chin on her head. Why not with a smile? When you were blindfolding her, I thought you might have feelings for her and want to confess. He chuckled, pulling out and cupping her face. I will never have feelings for someone like her. Besides, I have you and my feelings and emotions. Everything is just for you. Thank you to her on the forehead with devotion. The rest of the time, Wine was smiling ear to ear, glancing at their intermined hands.